Are you aware the presidential palaces of France and the United States are currently buzzing with panic? What is making France and the US to panic? That's because, right after sending the first shipment of weaponry and military instructors to Burkina Faso, Russia is sending more. Why does Russia keep sending troops and weapons to Burkina Faso? What is the covert plan that Russian President Vladimir Putin and Burkina Faso's Ibrahim Trohore hatched a few months ago and are currently carrying out? And why has it raised such a ruckus and heightened security in the presidential palaces of the Western world? What then has transpired? Get ready as we will be telling you more in this video. As a part of his ongoing African tour, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov made his first visit to Burkina Faso on June 4, 2024, in the evening. Burkina Faso's Foreign Minister, Karamoko Jean-Marie Trohore, greeted Lavrov, paving the way for a string of diplomatic meetings intended to cement relations between Russia and Burkina Faso. Lavrov commended the swiftly progressing bilateral relations between the two nations during his opening remarks in the meeting with Minister Traore. He credited this development to the agreements reached at the second Russia-Africa summit, which took place the year before and set the stage for improved communication and collaboration between Russia and several African countries, including Burkina Faso. Ever since a coup led by Captain Ibrahim Traore in 2022, Burkina Faso has been making concerted efforts to deepen its diplomatic relations with Russia. The fact that Burkina Bay officials visited Russia on a regular basis was indicative of this change in foreign policy. Notably, Kassim Koulibaly, the Minister of Veteran Affairs and Defense, visited Russia, signifying the strengthening of diplomatic and military ties between the two nations. As part of a wider African journey that commenced on Monday, Lavrov made stops in the Republic of Guinea and the Republic of the Congo before traveling to Burkina Faso. Lavrov aimed to reaffirm Russia's dedication to developing solid ties with African nations during these trips by highlighting respect and collaboration between the two regions. Lavrov planned to meet with Burkina Faso's president, Captain Ibrahim Traoré. This encounter was much awaited because it was thought to strengthen the already strong friendship between the two nations. You will soon learn about some startling transactions that resulted from this conversation. When he was in Burkina Faso, according to Lavrov, Russians in Africa feel like friends and at home. This statement demonstrated the friendliness and kindness he encountered in Burkina Faso. It also emphasized the cordial and helpful attitude that pervaded the conversations between Burkina Faso and Russian officials. Lavrov emphasized that Burkina Faso was the first African nation to work with Russia in a prompt and efficient manner. He emphasized that a big step in the direction of closer ties between the two nations was the recent establishment of the Russian embassy in Burkina Faso. The goal of the Russian embassy was to promote Russian culture and human ties by acting as a center of diplomacy and culture. Numerous cooperative initiatives are in progress, demonstrating the united endeavors of Burkina Faso and Russia. These initiatives, which include infrastructure, education, and agriculture, are intended to support Burkina Faso's social and economic growth. The collaboration in these fields illustrated the useful advantages of the improved partnership with reciprocal assistance and cooperative efforts benefiting both countries. However, what covert agreement about the deployment of military instructors has been made that has shocked Westerners? Russia's decision to provide more military equipment and trainers to Burkina Faso is a calculated move meant to strengthen the West African country's defenses. According to Russian official media, Sergei Lavrov, the foreign minister, revealed this decision while in Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso has been ruled by the military since a coup in 2022. Yelke Prigozhin, the founder of the Wagner Mercenary Force, was terminated in an aircraft crash in August. 
Units of this force have been stationed there. Lavrov emphasized that Russia and Burkina Faso have a close working relationship and that they are involved in a number of areas, including military and military technical cooperation. Lavrov expressed confidence in the partnership's effectiveness, saying that Russia is certain that the last terrorist threats on Burkina Faso's territory would be eliminated as a consequence of this cooperation. Lavrov's visit to Burkina Faso is a part of Russia's larger diplomatic push in Africa, where the country hopes to win over new trading partners and promote a multipolar world free from Western hegemony. Russia wants to make sure that nations in Africa, such as Burkina Faso, are equipped to handle challenges to their internal security. Burkina Faso is being forced to strengthen military capabilities so it becomes completely independent in resolving security concerns, rather than providing a gap that Western governments like France can cover. But it's precisely this that unnerves the West. The US and other Western governments are worried about the strengthening security ties between Russia and, and African countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger. Meanwhile, with ongoing talks for bauxite mining concessions in Sierra Leone and upcoming talks with Russia's top diamond producer, Al Rosa, Russian businesses are extending their economic presence in Africa. Lavrov demonstrated Moscow's determination to increase its influence in Burkina Faso when he announced a rise in the number of Russian military instructors there during a news conference in Ouagadougou. He emphasized the mutually beneficial nature of the cooperation, saying that Russian military and security personnel are receiving training in Russia. This project fits into Russia's larger plan to fortify its connections with African countries in the wake of the conflict in Ukraine, which has strained ties with Western nations. Lavrov reaffirmed his belief that cooperation between Russia and Burkina Faso is helpful in battling terrorism especially with regard to Islamist rebels operating in Burkina Faso. Since 2015, he expressed confidence that terrorist threats within Burkina Faso will be removed as a result of this relationship. This is not at all like how the West appears to assist African nations when Western troops are stationed and the security situation deteriorates. The irony of military help from the West is that However, what is the nuclear agreement that has escalated the situation? Much earlier, Russia and Burkina Faso signed multiple memorandums of understanding at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum, marking a major advancement in their collaboration on the peaceful applications of nuclear technology. Yakuba Zabreguba, the Minister of Energy, Mines and Quarries of Burkina Faso, and Alexei Likachev, the Director General of Rosatom signed these memorandums of understanding that address public opinion, infrastructure development, and education and training. These agreements set the stage for cooperation in important fields. They seek to improve nuclear energy education and training, evaluate and build nuclear infrastructure, and foster a favorable public opinion of nuclear energy encouraging Burkina Faso to use nuclear technology peacefully, especially in fields like agriculture and medical, is the aim. Rosatom highlighted that teacher training, student exchange programs, and cooperation between educational institutions will all be facilitated by the agreements. The goal of this educational exchange is to increase local nuclear technology competence so that Burkina Faso can produce a workforce with the necessary skills to manage and use nuclear technology efficiently. The agreements also contain initiatives to increase public knowledge of the advantages of nuclear technology's non-energy applications. This include emphasizing how it could enhance agricultural and medical procedures. Nuclear technology, for example, can be applied to medical diagnosis and treatment, improving the healthcare system. Through methods like irradiation, it can enhance crop yields and food safety in agriculture. The West is concerned, though, that Burkina Faso's population would learn how to use nuclear energy to make nuclear weapons if this were to happen. It defies the logic that the West believes it is safe for them to produce and own nuclear weapons but it is a threat to global peace when other countries produce and own nuclear weapons.
otherwise, there would be a worldwide threat. The earlier Memorandum of Understanding, which was signed in October 2023 and March 2024, are strengthened by these new ones. The prior accords delineated a course for the advancement of nuclear energy initiatives and the utilization of nuclear technology for diverse pragmatic uses in Burkina Faso. The more specific and practical goals presented in the most recent Memorandum of Understanding were made possible by these basic agreements. The signing of these Memorandum of Understanding took occurred at a key time because it was in line with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov's diplomatic visit to Burkina Faso. This high-level visit demonstrated the importance that both countries have on their developing partnership. Following their talks, Burkina Faso's Foreign Minister, Karamoko Jean-Marie Trohore, gave an optimistic statement regarding the partnership during a press conference. According to him, the collaboration is an advantage that will enable Burkina Faso to advance its infrastructural development in this regard. The strategic significance of these accords for Burkina Faso's national growth is demonstrated by Trohore's emphasis that the country's energy sector development remains a major goal. The signing of the Memorandum of Understanding and Lavrov's visit demonstrate how close Russia is becoming to Burkina Faso. Both countries are dedicated to using nuclear technology for good and peaceful ends. Both Russia and Burkina Faso stand to gain from this relationship, as Russia supplies the technical know-how and resources while Burkina Faso offers chances to apply cutting-edge technologies to regional problems. The emphasis on using nuclear technology peacefully is consistent with international initiatives to advance sustainable development. Burkina Faso wants to engage in nuclear technology in order to meet a number of development objectives, such as strengthening infrastructure, increasing agricultural output, and improving healthcare outcomes. It is anticipated that these developments will further the nation's general social and economic progress. Here's something to take note of. For many years, Burkina Faso maintained relations with the West, particularly France, but none of them provided the country with any means of achieving independence. The West did the opposite and kept Burkina Faso dependent on outside assistance for even the smallest tasks, in contrast to Russia, which wants Burkina Faso to be able to accomplish everything on its own. Add your voice to the total liberation of Africa by leaving a comment in the comments section below. Do not forget to like and subscribe for more informative videos like this one. Let's proceed. Do you think nuclear weapons will be supplied to Burkina Faso? Whatever the case, Russia will continue to arm Burkina Faso against its enemies in the West. As Vladimir Putin stated in a recent speech at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. In the midst of international tensions, Russia is demonstrating its assertiveness with its reiteration of a previous warning. According to Russia's nuclear doctrine, Putin underlined the circumstances in which nuclear weapons may be deployed stressing that they would only be acceptable in extreme cases that endangered the country's sovereignty and territorial integrity. He did, however, make a suggestion that this theory might be changed in the future to accommodate changing security circumstances. Although Putin emphasized that such steps are currently unnecessary, he did explore conducting nuclear tests if judged essential during his presentation of Russia's nuclear posture. This admission of room for flexibility in Russia's nuclear strategy shows the country's readiness to adapt to new challenges while keeping a deterrent posture. Put another way, Burkina Faso may soon receive nuclear weapons from Russia. Putin again restated Moscow's determination to defend Russian sovereignty with nuclear weapons if needed. This claim emphasizes Russia's determination to protect its interests as a nation and discourage possible enemies. But what kind of nuclear weapons are available? Vladimir Putin made a strategic allusion to Russia's capacity to sell nuclear weapons to other countries during a recent long news conference in an attempt to influence ongoing negotiations with Western nations. This proposal is made in the context of Russia's exclusion or voluntary departure from a number of international events, 
such as important holidays like the 80th anniversary of D-Day and prestigious diplomatic conferences like the G7 summit and negotiations pertaining to Ukraine. Putin took use of the occasion to highlight Russia's unwillingness to let Western countries set the whole world agenda. Putin reiterated Russia's position on a number of problems during this speech, focusing especially on the situation in Ukraine. This indicates that Burkina Faso will no longer be like any other African nation. It is going to be the strongest. Burkina Faso will witness a noteworthy increase in its military capabilities as a result of hiring Russian instructors to train its armed forces. Russian military experience, which is renowned for its exacting and efficient training techniques, has the ability to mold Burkina Faso's army into one that is more competent and well-behaved. This development is essential for bolstering the country's capacity to combat dangers from the inside and outside, such as terrorism, insurgencies, and difficulties with border security. Furthermore, the potential for Burkina Faso to obtain nuclear weapons that might strike Western nations signifies a significant change in the balance of power in the world. By serving as a deterrent to prospective Western aggression, such weapons could change the geopolitical environment in the area. The four, the Western countries worked together to overthrow African governments and install pro-Western leaders, but they will now hesitate before acting. Burkina Faso's populace is now receiving training in nuclear energy, which creates the possibility of the country developing its own nuclear weapons program. Although nuclear energy can be used peacefully for things like electricity generation, and medical research, the infrastructure and knowledge that come with it can also be used for military purposes. The West is afraid because of this. You should be aware that a collaboration between Russia and Burkina Faso could have a big impact on the geopolitical environment, both globally and in West Africa. Gaining Burkina Faso as an ally gives Russia more clout in the area and strategic leverage over Western objectives. Furthermore, Burkina Faso's nuclear capacity would force Western nations to reassess their plans, perhaps resulting in security and diplomatic measures to counter perceived threats. However, why establish an embassy? The historic visit by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov to Burkina Faso was a major turning point in the two nations' diplomatic ties. After a 31-year break, the Russian embassy's reopening in Ouagadougou in December 2023 marked a significant milestone. Lavrov conveyed his sincere appreciation to Minister Trohore for helping to facilitate this reopening. He underlined how crucial Burkina Faso's backing was, adding that it was a component of Russia's larger plan to reopen embassies throughout Africa. The purpose of this calculated action was to improve Russia's diplomatic standing and promote deeper ties with African countries. Lavrov expressed gratitude to Burkina Faso for its invaluable assistance in enabling Russia to take up its embassy duties in Ouagadougou. According to him, Burkina Faso was essentially the first nation to implement it. What, therefore, is President Ibrahim Traoré's covered strategy? Burkina Faso has become a major force in determining how Africa and Russia interact in recent years pushing for greater African nations' sovereignty and independence in choosing their strategic allies. Vladimir Putin of Russia and Ibrahim Trohore, the president of Burkina Faso, are spearheading this endeavor. They have worked together to intensify this trend and establish Burkina Faso as a vital bridge between Russia and other African nations, especially Niger and Mali. This cooperative project intends to solve urgent security issues throughout the continent while fostering African sovereignty and self-reliance. Burkina Faso's vital function as a point of contact between Russia and African countries originates from a common goal of advancing independence and autonomy in international affairs. Ibrahim Trohore, the ambassador of Burkina Faso to Russia, has been instrumental in developing diplomatic relations between the two countries. Burkina Faso has aggressively pursued alliances that put African interests and autonomy first. Under Trohore's direction, appending existing power relations in international affairs. 
a shared commitment to enhancing African military capabilities and taking proactive measures to address security concerns is the foundation of the Burkina Faso-Russian collaboration. Similar to Niger, Burkina Faso's armed forces are being actively trained by Russian experts. This partnership demonstrates a common goal of building a strong multinational military force that can defend the interests and sovereignty of Africa. Burkina Faso, along with its allies, aim to exert more influence over the dynamics of regional security through increased military cooperation and capability. Furthermore, Burkina Faso's possible nuclear capability adds another level of complexity to African security plans. Although the West may be concerned about the possibility of nuclear weaponry, it also acts as a potent deterrent against outside threats. Burkina Faso's will to protect its sovereignty is demonstrated by its ability to use nuclear deterrent and protect the interests of the country. A strategic advantage in preserving peace and stability is provided by nuclear deterrent in the face of major security threats like terrorism and transnational crime. The inclusion of other African countries in the Burkina Faso-Russia partnership represents a larger commitment to promoting African independence and autonomy in international relations. Burkina Faso and Russia hope to create an alliance of partners unified in their pursuit of sovereignty and self-determination by extending cooperation to nations such as Niger and Mali. With the help of this project, African countries will be able to maintain their independence and control over their own destiny. Moreover, Burkina Faso and Russia collaborate in a number of areas including trade, infrastructure, and energy, in addition to military cooperation. Both countries hope to increase economic possibilities and advance sustainable development throughout Africa by broadening their engagement. Burkina Faso and Russia want to enable African countries to forge their own paths and reach their full potential through partnerships and strategic investments. Russia is solely interested in an autonomous Africa devoid of Western exploitation and control. The reason for this is that only then will African nations be able to determine who their true allies are and which nations they ought to establish diplomatic ties with. In the long run, the cooperation between Burkina Faso and Russia has a lot of potential to advance African sovereignty and independence internationally. African countries expect to gain from increased economic growth, security collaboration, and diplomatic involvement as the relationship develops and grows. Ibrahim Trohore and Vladimir Putin are establishing the foundation for a more just and durable international order where African countries are given the freedom to freely and independently pursue their interests by fortifying their connections with Russia. Is Ibrahim Trohore making the correct decision? Do you think Ibrahim Trohore is purposefully choosing Russia since he knows the West is scared of Russia? What do you think Ibrahim Trohore should do to train the Burkina Bay army? Should he hire Russian military instructors? Tell us what you think in the comments section below. We explore the rich history, culture, and the ongoing struggle for sovereignty in Africa. Join us in this important conversation by subscribing to our channel. By subscribing, you're not just staying informed, you're becoming part of a movement dedicated to reclaiming Africa's rightful place on the global stage. Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Let's work together to spread knowledge and inspire change. Thanks for watching.